wrong one. My mistake. How are we all doing this morning? Much better. Okay. So, last time we kind of had an introduction to Lewis structures, right? Uh, we started talking about how to draw them. So let's start with practice. So let's start with the sulfate ion. So um, our first step, as we remember, uh, is to calculate all the num the valence electrons, right? And so I see a sulfur plus four oxygens, all of them having six plus two electrons. Remember the negative two charge there uh, will give us two valence electrons. Looking at that, that looks to be 32. Oh, Dumbo. Uh, that's 32 valence electrons, right? So, as always, then, we will draw our skeleton. And we are going to draw a single bond uh, using our lone pairs between the central atoms and all of the outer atoms. Uh, and so then we're going to start um, adding electron pairs, uh, lone pairs rather, to our outer atoms. So uh, I'll do those in light blue. So there's six of them. Another six. Another six. Another six. Fortunately, six times four is 24. So we did have enough electrons to do that. Um, and so now we just kind of want to double check, is everything happy? Um, and so we look at these, so all the oxygens look like they have eight electrons. They have uh, six electrons that are like the blue lone pair ones. Uh, and they have uh, the shared pair with the sulfur. So all of those do in fact have eight. And it looks like our sulfur also has eight. So everybody is happy. And so we're going to redraw... our structure with the uh, happy, happy uh, bonds drawn as lines, not forgetting our lone pairs, of course. And to cap it all off, we just put the brackets to indicate that it's an ion. So cool. Did we have any questions about this one? We're going to do kind of one more practice, and then we're going to start learning our next little uh, subject here. It's related to Lewis structures, of course, but uh, we're going to learn one more bit. Alrighty, so I'm not seeing any questions, so let's just do one more. Uh, let's do formaldehyde. So the total valence is 4 plus 1 plus 1 plus 6, which is 12. Carbon in the middle. So uh, I wanted to do this example to show you that um, you can have outer atoms that are uh, going to be different. They don't all have to be the same. Um, typically, uh, if something is given to you like this, it means that all of these guys are connected to the outer atom. I'm sorry, the, uh, the central atom. Uh, and so we're not going to put, you know, in this case, we're not going to put the oxygen in between the carbon and hydrogen. We're just going to attach everything to carbon. Uh, if there's something special, uh, we can do a case like that. Um, I'll show you how that's written. So anyways, let's go ahead and start with our... 
single uh, bonds here. So that's going to take six of our electrons away. We'll have six left. We will now go to our outer atoms. The hydrogens are already filled, so we can skip those. Remember, hydrogen only wants two electrons. Uh, it does not need any more, so we're okay. Let's now look at all these guys. It looks like uh, hydrogens are happy, oxygen is happy. However, our carbon uh, is not happy. And if we remember from um, last time, we do something special when we don't have enough on our uh, uh, central atom. What was that? What do we have to do? What are we going to do to this guy? Yeah, right, exactly, Sherry. We are going to move a lone pair from the oxygen to have it now shared between the carbon. And that's going to create, here, I'm going to, just because I can, uh, redraw it that way. And so we're going to have a double bond, right? And there is our structure. Hooray. All right, and since I had said so, we'll do one more. This is what it's going to look like. Uh, correct. All of these are just for covalent things, right? Because uh, covalent specifically talks about these shared electron pairs uh, in between the atoms. So these are all going to be non-metal based compounds. Okay, we're going to see that this particular molecule is written such that uh, it's got OH at the end. Let's see who's coming in this time. We have a visitor. I wonder which dog it's going to be. It might be Oz. Yeah, it looks like it's Oz. Okay, this thing is, is um, an OH on a non-metal based compound is known as an alcohol. Just so we know, this particular one is called methanol or methyl alcohol. It's the one that you'll go blind from uh, if you drink it. Um, the drinking alcohol is uh, ethyl alcohol. It's got another carbon on it. Um, we're going to see that, that this means uh, we have a hydrogen stuck onto the oxygen. That's why it's not written CH4O, it's written CH3OH, to indicate that that last hydrogen is one that's stuck onto the oxygen. And so if we uh, do this, if we're going to do our uh, total valence here, we have 4 plus 1 plus 1, plus 1, plus 6, plus 1, oh my gosh, 14. So we know that we have the oxygen and three hydrogens that are surrounding our carbon. Uh, and we're also going to have an extra hydrogen that's going to be stuck on our oxygen. Uh, so that's that's why you'll see certain structures, as particularly organic ones, hydrocarbon-based ones, uh, that will have uh, special little what are called functional groups. So, anyways, we'll continue as normal. So we'll make all our our single bonds. So that looks like we've used ten electrons. We've got four left. Let's go ahead and look at our outer atoms again. Thankfully, we have all these hydrogens. They're happy, so we're okay. So we're going to go ahead to our outer atom and give it four more. And looking at this, it looks like all of the elements in our structure are happy. And so we might redraw this like that. And again, it does not matter if you put your H that's on the oxygen down or up, doesn't really matter. Um, just put it somewhere. So again, we're seeing that um, these structures are kind of totally uh, 
Yeah, 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 yeah. That other H would, would count as an outer element for sure. Yeah. But thankfully, all these hydrogens don't need any more. So we don't have to worry about giving them extra electrons. Um, and it's not really that common that you're going to have something besides hydrogen that's stuck on an oxygen. So generally, it's not something we're going to have to deal with. So lucky us. All right. Any questions? Alrighty, so we're now going to be talking about shapes. We're going to see that these particular uh, Lewis structures will also be able to tell us information about what these molecules are shaped like. Um, and if you've ever taken anatomy and physiology, you know very, very well that form follows function, right? Um, function is based on structure. So, or rather, structure is based on function. Um, sorry. <laughs> it's been a while since I've done that. Um, so the structure of the molecule is going to be very important about how it's going to react, especially if you go all the way up into organic chemistry. That's all about this sort of thing. So uh, we're going to see we're going to have two types. The first one is called electron geometry. And with that, we're going to look at, at how many things what are called electron domains are on the central atom. The door keeps opening and I'm going to be like murdered or something. But Oz does not want to come in. So when we're looking at this, let's look at something like methane. Giving you the Lewis structure here. Um, we're going to see that this has four electron domains. Electron domains are either an atom, an outer atom that is, or a lone pair. Here's the first one, the second one, third one, fourth one. Here's ammonia. This one will also have four electron domains. In this case, we have four outer atoms for methane. And for this one, we have three outer atoms plus one lone pair. And so together, that's four. So a lone pair, even though it's two electrons, counts as one thing. It's one electron domain. And so using our handy dandy colors, just to differentiate between lone pairs and outer atoms. There we go. Do it again. Why not? Take a look at this. This also has four electron domains. Perhaps you're seeing a pattern. Uh, in this case, it's two atoms, two lone pairs. Exciting, I know. And here's another one. In this case, we're going to look at chlorine as our central atom. And lo and behold, it also has four electron domains. And in this case, we have one atom and three lone pairs. Oh man, this software update is just so annoying. It's going to keep bugging us through the entire class. 
So there's our, our first one, and we've got three domain, uh, other domains around it. So purpose of this is to illustrate to you that electron domains can be either lone pairs or atoms. Uh, we're going to see that uh, for purposes of electron geometry, they're interchangeable. Uh, so we just look at how many total domains there are. Gumbo wants to go out. Come on, Gumbo. I can go out. Okay. So um, normally this is something I do with balloons, but uh, I do not have those at home. So, um, uh, count after we've counted these electron domains, uh, we can consider some balloons. Okay, so let's say we have two things that are, are stuck on something in the middle. Uh, okay, you know what, let me, let me redraw that. I can undo it. Yeah, there we go. So let's say that the um, black dots here do not want to be close to each other. Um, they are electron domains. Electron domains um, essentially mean there are electrons there and electrons do not want to be near other electrons. I know you're thinking, but what about lone pairs? Special case. So one lone pair does not want to be next to another lone pair, and a lone pair does not next, want to be next to another atom, and one atom doesn't want to be next to a different atom. So assuming that these uh, black dots are the outer stuff, outer electron domains, uh, which one of these do we think is going to be uh, kind of better for, for the atoms? If the black dots want to be farther away from each other, or as far as possible, uh, we're going to see that there is a particular geometry they will uh, undergo so that they are as far from each other as possible. And so we can see here, like, obviously it's this case, right? Uh, to be as far apart from as possible uh, from, from each other, they'll be on opposite sides of the blue dot. The blue dot would be our central atom. And we see, we see that we have, uh, these guys are gonna be 180 degrees apart if we look at like kind of the angle that they make. Right, so they're just completely on opposite sides of each other. And we call this shape linear. And so uh, in this case, we have two electron domains. On the central atom. And I realized that all of the electron domain examples we did up there uh, all had four, but there are plenty of molecules uh, that only have two electron domains. Let's take a look at one that we did yesterday. Looking at the central atom, how many things does it have on it? We're going to see that this has two electron domains. And in this case, they are both atoms. That are stuck onto our carbon. It does not matter that they are double bonded we are looking at the number of things that are on carbon. And there are only two oxygens on carbon, two things only, that's it. And so we're gonna see that carbon dioxide will be a linear molecule. It will want, the oxygens do not want to be next to other oxygens, so they are gonna stay as far from each other as possible. And so again, that angle in between them is gonna be 180 degrees. And that angle that I'm talking about is between the oxygen atom, the carbon, and the other oxygen atom. So, I mean, they're just in a line, so of course it's going to be 180 degrees. Alrighty, I have another case for you. 
central atom there. So again, our um, electron domains are represented by the black dots here. If they want to be as far from each other as possible, they are going to go uh, through this way. Um, and so we can see we have a kind of geometric shape here that maybe you're familiar with. That's a polygon, right? We call it a triangle. <laughs> Three angles, right? Um, and so uh, we call this geometry uh, trigonal planar. Um, and that is going to mean that we have three electron domains. Um, and so, uh, we're going to see, I know I'm drawing all these crazy shapes here, let me um, erase all that. Goodbye triangle. Okay, if we look at the angle between two of the outer atoms with the central atom, we're going to see that that angle is... 120 degrees um, and so it'll be the same for any of those angles so if we did if we use the bottom dot instead it would still be 120 degrees and so uh, an example of this would be something like BF3 um, we have not done one with boron yet perhaps we should uh, yeah let's go ahead and do this one actually Boron has three valence electrons, fluorines have seven. Is that right? Boron, three electrons, yes it is. I guess I've given you a hint. Oh well, it's you know it's gonna be trigonal planar anyway. So we've used six, we have 18 left. There we go, lone pairs. Okay, we've used all of them. Angry red, no double bonds. Remember, boron only wants six electrons. Remember, boron is one of our exceptions. Uh, so we're going to see that this molecule will just have six electrons on boron. And so if we look at it, our Lewis structure here, uh, we're going to see that the angle between the fluorines uh, along the boron are going to be 120 degrees. So we have three electron domains. And they are all atoms. Uh, we have another example we just did, actually. Uh, I just realized. Lo and behold, look, another one. Another three electron domain, all of them being atoms, uh, molecule, and again we have 120 degrees. Oh, shame on me, I've left out my lone pairs. Never leave out your lone pairs. Okay, so um, both of these molecules, the boron trifluoride and the formaldehyde, uh, will be trigonal planar molecules, um, meaning they have three electron domains, uh, and those three want to be as far from each other as possible. Um, interestingly enough, I have 
uh, a picture of some of the dogs who have adopted this formation. They have just like stuck their booties together. <laughs> they have like there's you'll see that there's a triangle of them. I'll upload it for you guys later. Um, I think it's pretty funny. So Chihuahuas will also adopt this uh, three electron domain confirmation. So fun stuff. Alrighty. Any questions on those two? So we've seen a whole bunch of four electron domains, but we have not yet talked about their shape. And this one, uh, things are going to get a little bit more complicated. But it's not that bad. We're going to see that uh, we actually will um, go out of two dimensions now and into three. So you might be thinking, OK, they're just going to form a square around it. You know, we went from a line to a triangle to a square. You know, that's logical. Uh, however, we're going to see that it's actually going to be this case. But it's 3D. And so what that means is uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and pull up some stuff on the internet because that is going to be a much better drawing than something I can do. Okay. So uh, here we go. Uh, if we go ahead and take a look at our best friend Google here, did that work? Um, we're going to see that it's going to form a three-dimensional shape uh, where they're kind of, there's going to be one sticking straight up and the other three are going to kind of be um, pointing down a little bit. Um, so they're not going to be like in, you know, flat. They're going to be pointed down a little bit. And we're going to see, um, let's see here. Uh, let's see if we have some good examples of these. Uh, so yeah, this is kind of what it looks like in 3D. Oh, here's a here's one I like. Um, so you can see here we have our central atom in the middle, and we're gonna have three of those atoms are pointed down, and one of them is gonna be pointed up. So they're not a square like you might think, but they form this fancy shape called a tetrahedron. And so we normally draw this. Uh, if we take our methane, for example, we'll draw two of them kind of in the plane of the of this tablet or of the paper or whatever you're working on. And then we typically use a wedge and a dash. To indicate that it's 3D. So a wedge means it's coming out at you. And a dash means it's going into the paper. So two of them straight up like this. Ugh, time for me to do my stretches, I guess. So two of them, they are like this. And the other two are going to be like this. So two of them, two of them. You can all do your stretches too, I will allow it. So uh, we describe that uh, because it's very hard for us to draw three-dimensional shapes, especially those of us with poor artistic skills. Uh, we use wedges and dashes to indicate uh, when one is coming out at you and when one is going away uh, into the, the paper or the board or whatever. Okay, and we're gonna see that the angle in between these uh, is actually 109.5 degrees. And if you happen to have balloons at home, uh, try tying four of them together. You're going to see that this is the shape you're going to come up with. So we can think of these kind of electron domains as balloons, like they're just pushing each other out of the way. Um, and so we're going to see that naturally they're going to adopt this shape as well. Uh, and this is called a 
tetrahedron. And so the shape is called tetrahedral geometry. And that's going to be for four electron domains. So all of those ones we did before these guys all have tetrahedral electron geometry. We're going to see in fact tetrahedron is going to be the most common uh, way to do things because uh, four bonds is typically how you're going to make four uh, or eight electrons. So we're going to see that tetrahedral is going to be the most common one. Okay, so in a happy little table here, uh, you can come up with a table. We had carbon dioxide. We're going to see that was two domains and it was linear. So we're going to see anything with just two domains on it will always be linear for its electron geometry. Um, we had something like the formaldehyde, and that one is going to be trigonal planar. So uh, trigonal, again, is like a triangle, and it's planar. It's all flat. Uh, none, no one's poking in or out of the board. And our last one is the tetrahedron. So all we need to do is look at the number of electron domains. God, that hydrogen is ugly. Um, and that will tell us what the electron geometry is going to be. I feel like this box has made things worse, but oh well. So um, we can use this as kind of a reference for, uh, for when we're looking at structures. So uh, let's do a couple. Let's do selenium dioxide. Is this one going to be nice for us? 18, 8, 8. Yeah, we'll be okay. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I just had to think about it uh, with the rules that we teach you. So, yeah, this should work. Okay. So, let's take a look at this A molecule. Just by looking at its formula, it may be very difficult for you to say number of domains. You know, you might be tempted, okay, well, carbon dioxide had two domains, and therefore it's linear. However, um, because lone pairs are a thing, um, we, we should always draw our structure to double check. Because uh, just by looking at the formula, you may not be able to tell if there will be lone pairs or not. So selenium is in group six. So we have six plus six plus six which is 18. We have 14 left. We just use 12, we have two left. And so, um, since we had filled our outer atoms, I put the last two uh, onto selenium. And so just like before, we are going to have to plop in uh, a double bond there. And so looking at this, 
lo and behold, we have a trigonal planar geometry. And how the heck are we going to know this? We just look at how many things are stuck on selenium. So we see that we have a lone pair at the top, and we have two outer atoms. So that means three domains. We have uh, two atoms, one lone pair. And that's how we're going to find the trigonal planar. We're going to go ahead and look. Okay, uh, if it has three domains, it's trigonal planar. And lo and behold, poof, there we are. If we were to draw this with the geometry, um, just to be a little bit more correct, we would probably draw it this way. Uh, or again, you could put the, the oxygen up. doesn't really matter which one you put on top, but uh, as long as you have one single bonded oxygen, one double bonded oxygen, one lone pair, um, that's what matters here. Uh, and so there will, of course, be resonance with this molecule as well, right? We could have put the, uh, uh, we could have put the double bond on the left, right? Did I just say left, right together? Uh, we could have put the oxygen double bond on the left. Uh, I chose to do it on the right. Again, that's just my preference, but that's just me. You can do whatever you want. If you like the left side, go right ahead. Resonance means they're both correct. So, cool. Okay, question on that one. Or questions. All righty. How about we do this one is chloroform. And all of these guys are going to be on the carbon. So, 4 plus 1 plus 7 plus 7 plus 7, that's 21 plus 4, 26, 27. No, I don't know how to count. 21 plus 4 is 25. That's right. Okay, 26 total then. We should not have an odd number of electrons. I'm going to specifically avoid odd electron systems for this class. So always an even number of electrons for us. OK, so uh, carbon, hydrogen, chlorine, chlorine, chlorine. Um, perhaps you can tell already what the geometry is going to be. Um, we're never going to go more than four electron domains in this class, by the way. 28 have been, or er, 8 have been used, so we have 18 left. Hydrogen's already happy. So we're going to give 18 away to the chlorines. We have nothing left. We draw it real quick. And again, does not matter if you put the H on the top, or the right side, or the bottom. Doesn't matter. So this is the Lewis structure, and then we look, okay, how many domains does this have? I see we have four domains here, and they're all atoms. And so we're going to see that this should be tetrahedral. And so if we're going to redraw it with the correct geometry, Uh, we would do it like this. You 
you know, as I notice, I, I get better and better at drawing these, like, prettily <laughs> over time. So, just am amusing to me. Okay, cool. Questions on that one? Exciting. Already. Time to blow your minds. We can't really uh, see lone pairs in reality. And so we have something called molecular geometry focuses, which focuses on atoms only. So, if we take this water molecule here and redraw it, because what it's going to be tetrahedral, right? We have four electron domains. Uh, I'm going to just draw it like this. I know I, I, I'm just drawing these lone pairs with the wedge and dash just so we can see uh, where they are uh, in the tetrahedral shape here. If we don't, if we want to pretend the lone pairs aren't there, we can see what the shape of the molecule will look like. So electronically, it's going to be tetrahedral for sure. However, if we kind of just pretend that these lone pairs aren't here, just so you can see what I've done, uh, we see that this is definitely not linear, right? They still will have that bond angle of 109.5. In fact, it's gonna be a little bit less, but that's something you'll learn in 111. Um, and so we're going to see that we have a special name for this. Um, and we call this particular shape bent. So if we are to look at this Lewis structure and pretend the lone pairs aren't there and just look at what's left over, uh, we get what's called a bent molecule. And again, thankfully, being online, we have handy dandy Google to give us nice much better picture than I can give you. I don't need thermodynamic values. And so uh, this is what that's going to look like. Oh, you know what? Here, we're going to see all of these fun ones. So uh, we're going to see, you know what? This is too many for us. This is just going to confuse us. Aha, there we go. So uh, tetrahedral will be what it looks like in terms of its electron geometry. But if we pretend those lone pairs aren't there, we get the bent geometry, molecular geometry. So we just kind of pretend the lone pairs aren't there because they're so small. So they are going to still push things away from each other and, f and from uh, push the atoms away from the, the lone pairs, but we don't really see them. So all we see at the end of the day is this kind of bent shape. And so you see here, that's what I said, the, the angle will be a little less than 109.5. Um, you don't need to memorize this number, but it's going to be a little bit less just for reasons that we don't need to go into here. So uh, that's what it's going to look like uh, overall. So we're going to still, we're going to have a bent molecule. And so we're going to see that we have, in this case, we have four electron domains. We had two atoms and two lone pairs. We have uh, another way of writing this. Um, 
that's a little bit faster. We might describe this molecule as uh, this way, where X is the number of, of outer atoms, and E is the number of lone pairs. Uh, and A is just the central atom, so for us that's always going to be just one atom, so don't even worry about A. And we're going to see that anything that follows this AX2E2 uh, idea will be bent. molecular geometry. And tetrahedral, tetrahedral in electron geometry, geometry. Yikes. Okay, exciting. So, we can look at another case. Let's look at the ammonia. We're going to be practicing this today and tomorrow, just so you know. So um, we're not going to, I'm not going to just throw you in the deep end and be like, good luck. So don't worry. So uh, if we look at this, this uh, shape, um, will be, uh, so it's tetrahedral, right? Because we have four domains. That's three atoms, one on pair. And so we could write that like this. Three atoms, one lone pair. Again, just kind of shorthand, easy for us to uh, just write it real quick. So instead of just looking at uh, all that stuff, uh, as if you see the E should be a one, but we never write ones as subscripts, so exciting. Okay, so if, oh, not there. If we redraw this molecule with its happy tetrahedron, and we pretend the lone pairs aren't there. We see that this is not going to be trigonal planar, right? All these guys are pointing down. So they're not flat like they were in the trigonal planar. They're going to be pointed down. And so let's go ahead and look at Google for a 3D... Uh, description of this and we can see uh, let's see where it's a good one well these are all good kind of we see it's kind of rotated a little bit but we have all three of those hydrogens kind of pointed down oh, I think I like this one better um, we're gonna see that these three kind of pointed down Let's see if someone has done something similar to what we saw last time. Yeah, this is kind of similar, but it's ugly. Oh, you know what? I like this one, maybe. Yeah, kind of. So, uh, just like before, everything is a tetrahedron electronically. But if we pretend the lone pair isn't there, uh, we get this kind of pyramid shape. So you can see we kind of have our, our nitrogen at the top. And we've got three hydrogens below, and if you were to try and connect those lines, you would get a, uh, a nice little pyramid. And so, oh, I didn't show you the Google, did I? I'm sorry. Poop. Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. 
Y'all gotta let me know when I do that. Okay, so here is our tetrahedral geometry. If we pretend the lone pair isn't there, we're gonna end up with this little pyramid dude down here. Um, and so again, our, our angle is gonna be a little bit less than 109.5, but that's the closest one. Okay, I'm not gonna make you memorize uh, all this. Oh, look, here we go. We have all of them right here. So um, if we look at this, we see that this uh, shape is going to be what we call trigonal pyramidal. Molecular geometry. All right, so it looks like a pyramid that has three sides, right? So if we were to connect all these guys, we we'll get ready for my artistry. Uh, that's really ugly. Oh, here's the third one. Okay, there we go. Um, that's the pyramid. So in terms of electron domains, it's tetrahedral. In terms of molecular uh, shape, it's trigonal pyramidal. I'm gonna just zoom through methane because that one's boring. No lone pairs. So it's still tetrahedral. Uh, we would describe this one as AX4, by the way. We have four atoms, no lone pairs. And since we don't have any lone pairs, our shape is not changing. So for tetrahedral electron geometry. Oh, I forgot one. Erase this. Let's look at our HCl. In this case, it's AxE3. We have one atom, so X is one. And we have three lone pairs, so E is three. Um, I'll just write that again. One outer atom, three lone pairs. If we pretend those electrons aren't there, doesn't really matter which way I draw this. Get rid of them. We just have two things left, so this is linear. We just pretend those electrons aren't there. What's left is a linear shape. All right, it's just two things. Two things make a line. Okay, so with tetrahedral. we have kind of four possibilities. Um, I'm just uh, looking at all of these. I am, as I go down this list, I am just changing one outer atom into a lone pair. These are examples that would fit these criteria. We're going to see that the, um, so all of these guys will have tetrahedral electron geometry, but the molecular geometry will be different for all of them. So for this one, it was tetrahedral. For the ammonia, it was trigonal. Pyramidal. This one was bent, and this one was linear.
So again, I'm just kind of assembling it for you here. Um, these would be kind of an example compound that would follow these. And this is kind of just the like, um, the last one is just the like general way of describing similar molecules. So anything that fits this category of having three outer atoms and one lone pair will be trigonal pyramidal. Um, and so anytime we draw a Lewis structure that has one lone pair and three outer atoms, it's always going to be trigonal pyramidal for its molecular geometry. And one example of that would be ammonia. Alrighty, uh, I'm kind of going to zip through the, the uh, trigonal planar ones because they're kind of boring. We kind of really only have uh, two cases here. Uh, you could potentially have one that has two lone pairs and... Did that work? Two lone pairs and one outer atom? I can't think of anything that would fit that. So let's just not even use it. So looking at this, we kind of just have two, two potential shapes, right? This one is going to be trigonal planar. For molecular geometry because there's no lone pairs on carbon so nothing's going to change and if we go ahead and look at that selenium and pretend the lone pair isn't there uh, we end up with a bent molecule again so just like water was bent this selenium dioxide is also bent Okay, if we were to have something that were AX E2, I can't think of an example because it's probably not very common, that would be linear. If you think you just have two atoms, you have an, one central atom, outer atom, bunch of lone pairs, uh, looking at just the atoms is linear because there's only two things. So these, this would be for trigonal planar electron geometry. That would be these three guys. And we're going to see anything that is linear will still be linear. So, uh, for if it's linear electron geometry, for example, carbon dioxide, which is AX2, that's going to still be linear. Though interestingly enough, if you have carbon monoxide, which was AXE, that is also linear. So nothing exciting there. So if it's linear, thankfully for us, the molecular geometry does not change. So um, what may be a good idea to practice, so for tomorrow, we're going to start by doing a bunch of, not a bunch of, but some practice problems on how to uh, apply this, uh, this kind of giant table that I've done for you guys. Um, we're going to learn how to apply this. So uh, if you want, you can go back to the uh, Lewis structures that we did yesterday. Mm, yes, this one. If you want to look at the Lewis structures we did yesterday, uh, you can try and apply these rules to those. So if we look at this phosphorus trichloride, where did it go? Water, water, water. Okay. This one would technically be AX. 3E, right? Because we have the central atom, of course, we have three outer atoms, all of them being chlorines, and one lone pair. 
on phosphorus. And so that one would be trigonal pyramidal. We would go look at our chart. We would see electronically it's tetrahedral. Molecularly, it's trigonal pyramidal. And let's see, anything else? Linear, linear, boring, boring. This guy would be trigonal planar, of course. Trigonal planar versus tetrahedral. More trigonal planars. Boring. Okay, well, we'll do more uh, next time. So uh, we'll come back tomorrow, and we will continue with this, and we'll learn the kind of last bit, which talks about polarity. Um, and so don't forget, Thursday we have a review session. That's going to be... Uh, for you guys, so you're going to come up with questions and bring them to me, and we will have fun with them. Okay, so uh, I'll upload these to our server, and that's it for us. Okay, so I will see you tomorrow. Oh, look at all these ones that failed to upload before. So you see, I do try to, to upload these. It just uh, sometimes it fails. So, but today it looks like we're okay. All right, I will see you tomorrow.